I've never seen a church that had a blend of like native and Roman Catholicism. I mean, if I'm being honest, it's mostly Roman Catholicism. Catholics have never been one for subtlety, but the native aspect to this is really interesting. Morning, Fearless fam! They've done so many cool things so far. I'm like so excited about Tucson. I didn't expect to like it so much, but I really like it here. So today I am going on a little solo adventure. So I'm gonna go to the mission. I think the full name is Mission San Javier del Bac. It's like a historic Catholic church back from the days when Spanish missionaries were here. It's got a really interesting history, so I'll tell you more about it while you're actually looking at the building. What? This cat will not stop talking. What do you want? What? She wants to escape. Go catch the birds. I am caffeinated, I'm fed, and I'm on the way. I just found like the best station in Tucson. 97.5 The Vibe. It's classic hip hop. They said they're gonna play The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson and Ignition by R. Kelly. So I'm real excited about this station. <laughs> also, I don't know what it is, but like I have a little bit of anxiety about driving to the mission and then to Saguaro National Park West by myself. There's something about the desert that makes me feel like not as confident in my abilities to solo travel because I'm not not quite sure how to like be a person here and survive. I grew up in basically the opposite environment. So the desert is super foreign to me and I'm learning so much about it on this trip. I have a new appreciation for this kind of climate. So the exit that it just had me take has a Mexican town name on it. I feel very excited about that. I'm like, oh, I could go to Mexico just by driving on this road. It's kind of cool. I am actually now on an Indian reservation. Catholic church in Tucson on an Indian reservation. Here's a little pro tip for you. Don't speed on Indian reservations. I actually grew up near an Indian reservation and everybody who got speeding tickets got them on the Indian reservations. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, this thing's huge. So unlike temples in Thailand, it's actually totally fine for me to be wearing shoes and with my knees showing. So it feels like I'm doing something wrong right now, but I'm totally not. And I'm really excited to go explore this. There's also this hill over here that's really intriguing. I'm gonna go in the church, look around, then go up there. And I'll do some research on this so that when I show you images of the church, you can uh, learn a little about it. It's got a pretty crazy history. <laughs> I just pulled out my DSLR to try to take photos on it and I left the memory card out home. Oh well, I guess you guys are just gonna get some GoPro shots. <laughs> Mission San Javier del Bac is 10 miles south of downtown Tucson. It took me about 25 minutes to get there. Um, it's actually on the Tohono O'odham Reservation. There's no admission charge and it's actually open to the public daily so long as there's no church service going on at that time. The nickname for this place is the White Dove of the Desert, and I can totally see why. It's easily seen from a distance and very striking against its desert background. The San Javier part of the name refers to a Catholic saint, but the Del Bac part of the name is actually from the Tohono O'odham and means where the water appears, referring to the natural springs that were once here. It's a very dry area now. It doesn't look the same as it did back in the day. The church was founded in 1692 by a guy named, we're just gonna call him Francisco Kino. I can't pronounce his first name. But the reason I bring up his name is because he's well known in the Sonoran Desert for establishing missions and working with the indigenous Native American population. The church was built between 1783 and 1797, and the labor was all provided by the Tohono O'odham. Fun fact, it's actually the oldest European structure in Arizona. Mission San Javier is actually still an active church too. It's even got a school attached to it. It's been in continuous use for over 200 years. And it's a pilgrimage site as well with people visiting on foot and on horseback. I actually heard a crazy story from one of the tour guides in there. He said there's a reclining statue of St. Francis Javier in the church. And last year, a guy walked on his knees all the way up to the church and to the statue in prayer. The church was built on what was considered New Spain. Then in 1821, it became part of Mexico, and then it became the US in 1854. So there's a lot of things that have gone on here, a lot of historical stuff. I can't get into all of it in this video, but I definitely encourage you to look into this church because it's pretty interesting. Restoration of the church has been extensive and ongoing and probably expensive, and has returned the church to its original state or close to it. 
the colors, the architecture, the design that you see in all these shots is actually true to the initial construction. The Tohono O'odham people are an old tribe. They're very likely descendants of the prehistoric Hohokam culture, which is obviously prehistoric, so it's very old. And nowadays, the O'odham actually live on reservations that total more than 2.7 million acres. It's so hot in here. Many of the O'odham people that reside on the reservation are Catholic, but they're also very aware of their traditional way of life. The culture has been passed down through generations. The language has been passed down. The culture of the O'odham people is actually thriving. The O'odhams are actually really well known for their basket weaving. So one of my favorite things in the church was the fact that they had these like Catholic relics. So these pieces that you would pray over or hold holy water in or partake in communion from, and they were woven by native people. The idea of native people creating Catholic relics really just fascinates me. The church has a little museum as well, and in there you can see some pictures of what traditional Tohono O'odham homes and kitchens and villages used to look like. blend of like Roman Catholicism and local native culture at that church is so crazy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. So I just walked up this tiny hill and I'm like out of breath because it's so freaking hot. It's about high noon right now. There's like this little walk around thing so I'm gonna walk around this guy. Definitely some kind of pilgrimage prayer thing. I'm pretty sure part of what you see in the distance is Mexico because we're very close to Mexico right now. I'm definitely not walking the correct direction, but oh well. So I'm like a terrible traveler. I forgot two really important things. The SD card for the DSLR. Possibly more important, sunscreen. Really, Lauren? There's some kind of cool looking well thing down there. And then I don't know if you guys have noticed this already, but the desert actually has a lot of flowers in it and they're just starting to open up. So there's some really pretty yellow flowers over here. That's cool. I'm glad I came out here. If I were you, I would definitely add Mission San Javier del Bac to your travel list for Tucson. Highly recommend it. It's actually a 25 minute drive out of the city, so it's not too far. And it's really interesting. I've never seen a church that had a blend of like native and Roman Catholicism. I mean, if I'm being honest, it's mostly Roman Catholicism. Catholics have never been one for subtlety, but the native aspect to this is really interesting. Kind of crazy. They've got like woven baskets and portraits and statues of a native woman. Yeah, just never seen anything quite like it. That's pretty interesting. Oh shit, what are they making? They're doing fry bread, guys. Although I hear fry bread's really not traditional. These are spots for food vendors. That makes sense. Personally, I feel like I'm still lacking a huge portion of the history of this place. And, you know, I'm really curious if the native people did this all willingly or if this was something they were forced into back in the day because there's a lot of horror stories around the US. So I just, when I think about a, a Catholic mission coming into an Indian reservation, it doesn't make me feel good. So I don't know if there's parts of the history that I'm missing or if this is just a super unique situation, but either way, I personally find this place to be very fascinating and I hope you guys did too. I've got more Tucson travel vlogs coming for you guys. I'm spacing them out in between other content. If you're new here, I make videos all about travel and living well with anxiety. So welcome to the Fearless Fam. Hit that little subscribe button down below and check out the links that are on the screen right now for my Facebook and my Snapchat. Be sure to add me on there. I'm active on those two every single day and I'm looking forward to chatting with you guys. Thanks for watching today guys. I will see you tomorrow with a video that I've been a little scared to make because it's a somewhat controversial topic. So I'm really interested to see how you guys react to it. It is not about Arizona at all. So I'll leave you on that note. Okay, bye.